This Argosy aircraft took off in New Zealand on a newspaper delivery run. It followed the route taken 10 days earlier by a plane which had reported weird flying objects off the Kaikoura coast, objects confirmed by radar controllers in Wellington. Now a TV crew was on board with Australian reporter Quentin Fogarty. We're now approaching the Clarence River where the highest concentration of UFOs was sighted on the morning of December the 21st. We're at an altitude of 14,000 feet and we're on exactly the same route taken by Captain Fowl when he encountered those mysterious objects. It's a beautiful clear night outside and naturally we'll be looking out for anything unusual. Hardly had Fogarty spoken when things began to happen. Uh, we've just heard from Wellington Radar that we've uh, got an object about a mile behind us and it's following us. Let's hope they're friendly. It's uh, really getting uh, a bit frightening up here. There's a whole formation of un unidentified flying objects behind us. But there were closer encounters to come. On the return journey from Christchurch, Fogarty spotted another object. It was extremely bright, much brighter than any of the other stars in the sky. Now it's just dimmed, it's, it's gone. It's back again, it appears to be going behind cloud. I can't quite make out whether in fact it's going behind cloud or whether in fact the light is just dimming. No, it's such a bright light, it's lighting up the clouds around it. This is by far the best of the unidentified flying objects we've seen so far. According to our cameraman, David Crockett, who's been filming it for the past few moments, it appears to have a brightly lit bottom and a transparent sort of sphere on top. So it appears to be, well, like a, a flying saucer. We've got another one right in front of us, very bright, giving off an orange flashing light. It looks like a, an aircraft beacon. It seems to be rolling and turning. Oh, I don't know. I really don't know what's going on. After the plane landed at Blenheim, the investigation began. Skeptics suggested they'd seen the planet Venus, but most of the film was taken more than half an hour before Venus could have been visible. An American Navy physicist, Dr. Bruce Maccabee, analyzed the film and rejected theories that it showed meteors or ships or birds. Several of the objects had shown up on radar screens. One of them had left this extraordinary trail on a single frame of film. And although the start of this sequence is out of focus, some frames seem to show what the TV crew and pilots said they had seen. A luminous base with a transparent top. Dr. Maccabee's conclusion, no known explanation could account for all the facts. I was working for Channel O in Melbourne, Australia, and in 1978 in December I was on holidays back in my homeland, New Zealand. Reporter Quentin Fogarty may not have been the only visitor flying into town that day. Two flight crews from a company called Safe Air had sighted uh, bright lights in the sky. I had a phone call from my office back in Melbourne to say that they were keen for me to follow up a strong UFO sighting of two or three days earlier. Doesn't something always come up when you're on vacation? When we took off from Wellington, the flight crew pointed out towards the right of the aircraft the lights of a town called Kaikoura in the distance, and then sort of above the town, with this, we could see a row of lights would start as a little pinprick and then turn into a great globe of light, and then it would just shrink down again to nothing. I'd never seen anything like it before. In terms of my feelings, initially I was very excited, but I don't think at any stage I ever really felt that I was in you know, incredible danger, although at times I did feel a little scared. David, the cameraman, was having great difficulty filming these lights, so we, we, we got very little footage. When we landed, uh, the captain offered us the opportunity to go back on the return flight. The sound recorder, she got off, she was so scared she wouldn't go back on the plane. I had mixed feelings about getting back on board the plane because it was out of my comfort zone at, at times. But then I also knew David had great difficulty getting good footage. 
And I thought, well, if they were there on the way down, they might be there on the way back. So I agreed to go back. We took off from Christchurch. The flight crew pointed out a bright light. In fact, I saw two bright lights off to the, the right-hand side of the aircraft, out to sea. This light seemed to pace the aircraft. The flight crew are quite convinced also that the light was airborne and was moving and manoeuvred as well as moving. We continued to see the same sort of bright lights that started as little pinpricks and turned into great globes of light all the way back to the aircraft's home base of Blenheim. When we landed, I thought, I've got a world scoop here. And I thought, wow, this is going to be a big story. Fogarty. 30 years later, I still would love to know what we saw. And I'm hoping that one day, before I pass off the mortal coil, that somebody can establish whether it was animal, mineral, vegetable. Who knows? That would be nice.